Good morning. Welcome to the service of morning prayer for January 4th. My name is Susan Drain. I am a lay reader in this Cathedral Church of All Saints in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be still and aware of the presence of God within and all around. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this day and for this time when we can turn our thoughts from busyness and responsibility to your light and your peace. We thank you for all your gifts, for your creation around us, for the abundance of your provision for us, for friends and loved ones, and for both the blessings and the challenges that enrich our lives. We thank you for the power with which poetry speaks to us of your unfailing grace. Amen. A reading of Psalm 87. On the holy mount stands the city he founded. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God. Among those who know me, I mention Rahab and Babylon, Philistia too and Tyre with the Ethiopia. This one was born there, they say. And of Zion it shall be said, this one and that one were born in it, for the Most High himself will establish it. The Lord records as he registers the peoples, this one was born there. Singers and dancers alike say, all my springs are in you. Here ends the lesson. Psalm 87 reassures the people of Israel that even though they are captive in Babylon, their true home is still and always God's home, the city of Zion. And Christians too look to a symbolic version of Zion, a new Jerusalem, as their home in an alien world. The hymn writer John Newton takes one line from the psalm glorious things are spoken of you, O city of God, and spins it into a vision of Zion as both a physical and a spiritual place. It is a stronghold impregnable to threats and a source of life and abundance in the living waters that spring up and stream out to nourish the people of God. Glorious things are indeed spoken of Zion and of the unfailing grace that ever flows from age to age. Savior, if of Zion's city I, through grace, a member am, writes Newton. His humble doubt should be deeply reassuring. This is someone who deeply knows what grace is and how it works. He found it in his own life as the reformed captain of a slave ship, and he expresses it in that other well-known hymn of his, Amazing Grace. There we, assured, we are assured that God's grace is amazing enough for even the worst of wretches, and so will surely suffice our needs. So through grace, we are citizens of that holy place, and though the world may deride or pity what it sees as foolishness, we, like Newton, will glory in thy name. May it be so. Before we turn to the tasks of the day, let us pray for ourselves and for one another. Give us strength for this day. Give us joy in this day. Comfort those who suffer and those who mourn. Send us wherever we are needed and sustain us on the way. Keep us strong in the strength of Zion and joyful in its overflowing life. And we pray together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> 